Hello and good morning. Come one, come all to a live post here at the Wildcat Sanctuary. Hey everyone, it is Friday. We've made it to the end of a week, Gino. I apologize, Mr. Napping Lion. I'll speak a little quieter. Uh, you know, I just had to risk it for a biscuit, as they say in decidedly crash and burn on a live post in Hybrid Haven uh, just a few moments ago. But the reason that I risked it, uh, I just had to see if the service was going to budge because I was hanging out with Fargo. Bengal Fargo, who uh, we've announced is now fully merged with some new hybrid friends, was uh, really marching around his bungalow like he owns a place. And uh, I, I really did attempt to do a live post, uh, but here we are, take two, wishing that I could have shared you uh, Fargo walking around his bungalow space, but that darn internet. Nonetheless, we're going to have a good day today. Talk about all things Wildcat Sanctuary, visit with some of the rescues that you do so much to support, and just see how the folks are doing. So that's Lion Gino taking it easy. And while he's doing that, I'm going to say hi to some some people. Hey, Bella Rourke. Saying hi to everyone. Kelly Anderson here. Hey, Kelly. Cheryl Harden. Hey, Cheryl. Rosie P. Hey, Rosie. Lois A. is here. Guess you're still having internet issues as it is, as it goes sometimes, Lois, particularly up in Hybrid Haven. Just a lot of fencing, a lot of trees, uh, and that internet just has trouble reaching up there. Hey, Amy Brooks, Kelly Howes, good morning to both of you. Hey, Lorianne, handsome Gino says Genie, that's a good ID from this distance. But you got that big, beautiful blonde mane, certainly gives you away, Mr. Gino. Take two, says Courtney. Good, indeed, indeed. I uh, Take one, if anyone is kind of joining partway in here. Uh, take one, I attempted to go live from Hybrid Haven, F1 Bengal Fargo, who we announced is now fully merged uh, with a new group of hybrid friends in our Hybrid Haven area of the sanctuary. Well, he was marching around his bungalow, like he owns a place, like he's been here for years. <laughs> And uh, I wanted to be able to share that on a live, but that darn internet, Gino. So I'll talk about it either way, and we'll applaud Fargo. We'll applaud his new friends, and we'll applaud, of course, our caretaking staff for being so diligent and thorough with the merging process and getting that guy to a, uh, to a group of uh, hybrid pals who are, are definitely going to kind of facilitate his wild heart journey and and uh, companionship goes a long ways for some of our cats, and it's looking like it's going to do exactly that for Mr. Fargo. All right. Well, I wanted to start off with a lazy Gino, and we've done that. That's a curious Taras wondering when that UTV is going to come pulling up to his building. We'll get a quick little main check for the day. Hey, handsome dude. Hey, handsome man. And I gotta say, Taras, I'm not doing you any favors by showing Gino's mane and then coming over to you. It does look a little shaggy compared to Gino's full-bodied mane, but Gino is a full-grown lion. Taras is on his way to becoming a full-grown lion, so I'm not gonna knock you too hard, big fella. But I will poke a little fun at you, hmm? You don't need to do that. Yeah, you don't need to do that, Goofy. Kim K, I love it when people point that out. Gino's got his belly to the sky, kind of pointing out how carefree of a life he's leading here at the Wildcat Sanctuary. And, you know, I really couldn't agree more. And I I think i fortunate, obviously, being here every day. I see, you know, kind of different manifestations of that, of how, um, you know, the proof is in the pudding and that the cats are living their best life and are living the most compassionate rescued life that they can. And, uh, of course, all brought to you by you. Brought to you by the people who you are standing alongside watching this live post with. And that's truly is the best part of it all. Is kind of just understanding the formula and and uh, how we got here. 
and how you guys are playing a major, major role in that. But let's keep the party moving. Hoping uh, it's kind of a pretty mild morning. Hoping for Leopard Shazam. I'm sure Leo and Monza are going to be crashing out. It'd be nice to see them. Uh, I did see the caretakers pull up to the Feline Meadows building. So it doesn't look like we'll be catching any of those cats today because they're enjoying their meal time. But onward and forward. And anyway, I do see a member of the Three Wild up on a cave. That could be fun to drop in on them. Let's see what's happening here. <laughs> Kim thinking Taras's mane, uh, you know, with the length that it's at, it makes him look like he has uh, bangs. <laughs> hey, KDT, good morning. Checking in, saying, sharing your love for the Ukrainian lions. Thank you for that, Katie. Monica Dennis pointing out how beautiful of creatures they are. They absolutely are. I cannot deny their beauty. And tragically, it's oftentimes the beauty of these wildcats that gets them into these types of situations in the first place where they're being exploited for their looks. They're being exploited for that beauty. And Monza, you certainly have a captivating beauty, but along with that beauty, it's a wild beauty. It comes with wild instincts that we're going to respect here at the Wildcat Sanctuary. But nonetheless, I do get to marvel and revel in your beauty, and I'm fortunate for that. That's Monza leading up the front, her brother Leo hanging out in the back. Speaking of things where you guys can kind of sit back and rest on your laurels of what your support has accomplished for the Wildcat Sanctuary, not only bringing seven lions from a different continent, um, from Argentina, but reuniting siblings after they were separated at birth. Leo and Monza are siblings. And Leo and Monza were uh, born and then separated uh, and lived at two different zoos in Argentina and uh, had not been reunited until coming here to the Wildcat Sanctuary. So you not only provide new life, uh, but you also provide, uh, you know, long lost companionship, which is very, very cool. That's one thing that I always think is so special whenever I look at Leo and Monza and that it was never going to be in the cards for this sibling pair to be united again. Um, but here, uh, here they are living their best life together as siblings here in a rescue sanctuary. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, I'm talking about you, lazy gal. I'm talking about you. Seen somebody noticed uh, some of the fall foliage that's beginning to pop around northern Minnesota. Kelly and Judy noticing. Uh, admittedly, a little earlier than it normally comes. Still have plenty of green, but you start turning down the way, and things are getting a little technicolored that direction. Let's see if a handsome black leopard's anywhere. Mr. Shazam. Alrighty. Let's see. I'm kind of thinking, uh, you know, relatively speaking, it's kind of been a quiet week. We had, you know, lots of updates in terms of, of course, Mojave and Amira, male caracal and female caracal, officially having names and a wild at heart identity. Uh, oh, another thing we shared in yesterday's e-newsletter was Sushi doing some fishing. And uh, Sushi, sushi uh, you know, she can leave behind the, you know, the pole and and uh, reel at home. Fishy, uh, sushi is a fishing cat. And uh, she's been doing uh, exactly what a fishing cat may do in the wild. And uh, has been kind of pawing around. Hey, handsome dude. Kind of pawing around some of the pools that uh, caretakers have set out for her. Uh, we purchased a fountain for her, then a donor, a generous donor purchased an even larger fountain for Miss Sushi. Um, so, uh, Sushi is well on her way, as Tammy kind of said, of, you know, maybe in her former life, she wasn't uh, given the chance to be a fishing cat. Well, here at the Wildcat Sanctuary, she is now well on her way 
to reclaiming the rightful title of a true blue fishing cap. Hmm? Mmm. This is Black Leopard Shazam, everyone. And we all know Shazam here. Shazam is actually one of our oldest rescued residents here at the Wildcat Sanctuary. I think Shazam, you know, when I'm doing these live posts, I could talk about all types of examples of how our donors support uh, caters to cats like Shazam from uh, things like his the expert veterinary care that we offer him. Shazam's given us a few scares um, to where he's had some masses that have turned out to have been benign. Um, but uh, Shazam getting a, obviously that vigilant level of uh, veterinary care in his senior age, but also knowing that he's prone to developing these masses. Mr. Shazam benefits from operant conditioning. He is a black leopard, an incredibly intelligent dude. And uh, being able to uh, exert some of that mental energy through uh, what we call operant conditioning here at the Wildcat Sanctuary, a positive uh, reinforcement training with our cats. We know Shazam benefits from that. We've actually seen the operant conditioning. I know many of you uh, have watched along on live posts of maybe Elise or one of the other caretakers working with Shazam. And we can think that operating conditioning, that positive reinforcement training for a handful of things. I can think of a cat like Tao who's benefited from it. Gino does some operant conditioning training because he gets a little too excited before mealtime. Uh, Aria has been doing some operant conditioning training along with Bosco for their Silencia injections. It's, it's really awesome how... I hear you grumbling and drinking, Mr. Sazam. Really awesome how... Um, effective um, and of course cooperative uh, that our operant conditioning can be let's see what are they saying about you in the comments Shazam it's been me talking Kathy Barton saying there's something extra special about the black leopards I agree extra gumbly he says hmm uh, Sarah Bloomberg asking do you give sushi live or dead fish uh, sushi's just been getting uh, uh, dead fish and dead fish sounds a little unappealing. You know, your frozen processed uh, fish. She's, she's had herring, um, tuna, obviously. Uh, we have a large whole mackerel. And uh, I've just been kind of hearing uh, kind of all types of buzz of how we are working with our, our current uh, food suppliers to nail down uh, some more kind of pescatarian items for Miss Sushi. Um, but it's still definitely kind of abiding by the same thing uh, we do with the other um, types of diets where we're not going to drop a cow into a tiger habitat. We're not going to drop, uh, you know, a whole chicken into a, li a live chicken into a bobcat habitat. We love animals, too, um, and definitely understand the fact that uh, big cats and wild cats are carnivores and they have a carnivore diet. Um, but we don't want an any animal kind of suffering in that process. What are you looking at? What's over there? Hmm? You hear the buzz of a UTV? I'm nothing but chopped liver? If you say so. I'm glad we're getting a little leopard time in, though. A little leopard time in. Kendra Ditto getting excited about how you love watching the operant conditioning and how smart cats can be. <laughs> it looks like maybe you've tried to do some same uh, with your domestics at home. <laughs> I do have a, a couple of friends who have uh, their domestic cat that uh, I think is, is more uh, well-trained than dogs that I've encountered. It's pretty incredible. Hey, mister. I'm just using you as a backdrop for a while. I look through a few comments here. You're just my backdrop, Mr. My handsome backdrop, that is. Faith Warner commenting, uh, Wonderful to see Fargo go from feral to having BFFs, uh, Best friends. Best friends forever? I think that's what that is, Faith. Uh, such a true testament to the compassionate uh, and caring, uh, loving humans at TWS. Thank you for that uh, comment, Faith. Always so heartfelt and sincere and um, 
you know, we appreciate that you see that we're going for uh, going to these types of links for, uh, you know, down to the smallest of our rescues, like little Mr. Fargo. All right, handsome dude, I'm going to slowly get up and I'm cruising. I'm out of here. I'm old news. I'm old news, Shazam. <laughs> All right. Just checking on a few more comments there. I'm also kind of looking across the way to see if Alana and Aurora are around. I don't see the two. Oh, of course. Well, they're pulled up to the Feline Meadows building, so they're definitely not around. Uh, I'll interject on my, myself and welcome anyone if you're just joining us to a live post at the Wildcat Sanctuary. We're cruising around, visiting with some rescues. We've seen Shazam. We've seen Gino. Little Lion Taras. Big Lion Leo. His sister Mansa. And now I'd like to maybe see if we get a little tiger time in. And I think, I think, I think I see a Tarek doing some grooming under his platform here. What's a, what's a handsome dude look like you doing? He says, I'm being handsome. Enjoying the wonderful space that you have provided me. Patrolling my area, hanging out with Shazam, maybe knocked her on a toy. Tarek uh, spends his time in a variety of ways. And it looks like maybe he finished up his meal and he's got some grooming to do. Well, give me a second to go through some comments. What do you think, handsome dude? Yeah, he says, there we go. You think this is handsome. Let me clean myself up a bit. I'll make Brad Pitt look like a rock. <laughs> Derek, of course, living with uh, companion Polina. Mr. Tarek and Miss Polina are, uh, are good examples of how you know, a lot of the things that happen here at the Wildcat Sanctuary not always, uh, you know, is able to be made public immediately. Tarek and Polina are former witness protection cats uh, and had been living at the Wildcat Sanctuary for some time um, um, before us being able to announce them to their public, uh, to the public in their case, uh, concluding uh, us being granted full custody of Tarek and Polina. And we don't want to forget uh, Cougar Harold, who was also involved in this rescue, um, but also tragically just goes to show of how um, even within the witness protection program, we're caring for these cats and they do pass away. And we love these animals just like we love the residents that you all know, um, but we're not able to share them with you and have that kind of mourning process. Um, and glad that we were able to do that with Harold when we did uh you know, when we did have this case conclude and we're granted custody of those three cats. Thank you for the huff. And Tiger's chuff, but Tarek huffs. Huff, huff. Oof. <laughs> uh, you know, I think all the tigers kind of have an identifiable chuff, but Tarek in particular, oof, oof, he huffs. Uh, the chuff is usually kind of segmented out like the oof, kind of that like vibrating and rolling, but Tarek just gives a, he gives a big huff. I huff and I puff. Truth to tell, I'm going to zoom in on Dash, but I'm going to make a kind of uh, fast turn around the corner um, because I saw some cougars out. Uh, that would be uh, Miss Rainier, Tacoma, and Quincy. I saw that they were kind of out and about, and we don't often get to see them, Mr. Dash. I'm fortunate on how, how willing you're able to come and hang out with us. But those wild-born cougars can be a little bit more sensitive about where they share, their, when they share their people time. So I kind of want to capitalize on that. 
Uh, but as I'm leaving, Dash is progressing his stock here. <laughs> leave it to the cats, Dash. I think I have a game plan. And leave it to a stalking, chuffing tiger to kind of break things up for me, hmm? Sharon commenting just how quickly the trees have been changing. It's happened pretty fast, Sharon. You're up here volunteering the other weekend, and uh, they hadn't even changed this much. It's happening fast. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of right in the nexus of where uh, the trees are changing the fastest. And Dash, you get quite the view here. Hmm? Pretty beautiful. Pretty beautiful. Um, so it's definitely happening a little bit earlier. It's usually kind of the last week in September. That's kind of the crest of the fall colors here, but still lots of turning to go yet, Mr. Dashy. All right, are, are you done derailing my progress? <laughs> I'm being sarcastic, Mr. Dashers. I will happily make a pit stop and hang out with you. Just look at how ecstatic everyone is to see you, and look how proud everyone is at how large and formidable of a tiger that you've become. <laughs> he chuffs back and says, you betcha. Thanks to you. <laughs> but I got to keep the party moving, handsome dude. I got to keep the party moving, all right? Handsome and a big dude. Kendra Ditto asking, there's tarp between Dash, Tarek, and Polina? Question mark. That is correct. That is shade cloth that we use. Uh, unfortunately, because Polina is not too keen on uh, other tigers. Um, for some reason, she's just not too fond of uh, having other tigers there. When uh, when Nona was in that habitat, it was the same case. Now Dash is in that habitat, it's the same case. Um, we know Winona to uh, formally have some respiratory issues. She had the... Um, Basically, what was a severe case of acid reflux causing her esophagus to become swollen. And we've since kind of gotten that under control, but we are still wanting just to make sure that Polina isn't getting herself worked up and getting herself overheated. And that little shade cloth um, just provides just a simple barrier for Miss Polina not to fixate and get too um, invested in tracking down Mr. Dash as he's, he's in his habitat. So... Um, just a little way that we're wanting to service Polina and make sure that she's comfortable and, and uh, of course, staying safe, too. <laughs> getting, getting sidetracked again. Little Tigress Nova, who's going to probably pounce on me in, a, in just a moment. Hey, you're right about that, uh, Pat, pointing out how beautiful the weather is today. It is marvelous. That sun is even warming up a bit, Nova. And, uh, hey, bring it on. It's been hot. It's been hot, hot, hot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's been hot, 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 pretty Nova. And uh, I am welcoming this type of weather with open arms, as with the cats and as with the staff and interns. We're getting lots of chops here, hmm? <laughs> yeah. Yes. I am so glad that we get to see you two, but I admittedly want to go check in on those cougars still, Miss Indian Nova, because we get a lot of time with these special girls, and we love having that time with these special gals. <laughs> At least I get some chops to guide me along my way, hmm? I get some chops to guide me along my way. Let's see if those cougs are still out. Those cougs. <laughs> All right, everyone. Glad we got to quickly say hi to the girls. But I really would like to see what the three wild are up to. And uh, maybe even as well service willing we can go around the corner and say hi to Aaron and that will probably be a good conclusion to our live post this morning ok 
Okay, I saw someone on a cave earlier. I will point this out. I do see somebody else right near, probably under a platform, but I will point this out of, uh, and I've done this before on live posts, is uh, there's a certain level of companionship between the three wild, whose habitat uh, that I'm looking into right now, and then the five wild group on the other side. So that's Noah walking along the wall. That is Quincy very purposefully sitting against that wall. Noah is now kind of sitting, it looks like. Uh, and they're socializing. They're having a little bit of a uh, little cougar time with one another. And uh, I just like seeing that there's just a little level of kinship and bond with this group. And I'm even noticing Langley, who's purposefully sitting and looking this direction. And uh, yeah, it's just always pointing out that, uh, hey, these two groups of rescued cougars might not live together, but they live along a shared wall. And nice to see that there's kind of some level of interaction and socialization between the groups and all, um, you know, all positive as well. Yeah, cougar chat time, says Helen. That's what it seems like. Meeting of the cougar minds. And Miss Rainier is under her platform right here. And I'll probably stop right here and just zoom in on this pretty gal. There you are, pretty lady. And it's always good to kind of check in with some of the wild born rescues here at the Wildcat Sanctuary because, um, you know, they're just, uh, you know, Know, a segment of our rescued population but follow a different rescue path in which led them here to the wildcat sanctuary um, and it kind of lies uh, there in the name and the words that i used wild born is that uh, rainier was a wild born cougar she was born in the wild um, and unfortunately uh, after her mother was legally killed rainier and her siblings quincy and, and tacoma um, we're found huddled under uh, a deck in a neighborhood, in someone's backyard. And uh, unfortunately, there's laws prohibiting the rehab and release of apex predators like cougars. Um, you know, fortunate uh, that uh, these cats don't have to be euthanized and that they can come live a life in sanctuary, despite we want all wild cats to be living a wild life. Um, happy that they get to live a wild at heart life, but always still worth kind of talking about the path that led them here to Sanctuary and how it might differ from some of our captive-born rescues. Um, but also on top of that, Rainier, how um, kind of the husbandry uh, and care is kind of tweaked and adjusted for wild-born cats as opposed to a captive-born cat. But I'll admit I'm rather flattered, Miss Rainier. You're kind of falling asleep on me. And uh, really is such a beautiful cat. Torben pointing out just how stunning she is. I couldn't agree more. A beautiful white muzzle. I just think cougars have the best eye makeup too. And uh, certainly a regal and beautiful animal, Miss Rainier. Hmm? And a beautiful name too. And a beautiful name. I'm just going to go around and see if one of your brothers is in here too. Because then we hit the whole family. Because then we hit the whole family. Otherwise, I'll do a U-turn and check in on some cheetahs. No, I don't see Tacoma. Sometimes he likes kind of hanging out in this corner. But we will do a cheetah check in. And I think, I think, I think, call that a live post for the day, everyone. Is it okay if I kneel down, pretty girl? Thank you. Thank you. Lori Ann, wishing everybody a great weekend. Thank you for that, Lori. What is everybody doing this weekend? I don't even know what I'm doing this weekend. I gotta figure out something, Miss Rainier. Thank you for the 50 stars, Paul Stringer. Oh, 
Ole Miss Rainier. Beautiful indeed. I love everybody just marveling. Yeah. That's so nice. Mm -hmm. That makes me happy, pretty girl. Okay. Speaking of cougars, Tanya Toner asking, how's Anastasia doing? Anastasia's doing well. And, uh... One of those cats talk about kind of captive born versus wild born and how kind of the level of care differs between the two and Anastasia, um, you know, kind of demanding a much more kind of hands off level of care, which certainly makes it hard to document. We know that it's hard to get her on live posts even, but nonetheless, uh, Anastasia is happy and healthy and living life on her own terms, which, which is how we want it. And selfishly, I know we want to see her a little bit more on live posts, but, um, you know, just still happy to know that she's doing and living how she wants to. And I admit, every time I come around this corner, I will look in her favorite den here. And unfortunately, I don't see her there. Typically, she will set up in that den at around 4.30 p.m. And then from there, it's kind of, uh, you know, the parents are gone. And uh, Miss Anastasia throws her own little cougar house party. You have the boys here. Mikitu soaking in the sun. Lavani on the back, taking in the shade. <laughs> Comfy as can be. Let's see. Go through some more comments here. Wondering what everybody's doing for their weekend. Paul Stringer says, not a thing. You went to tube? Tubing? Maria P, thank you for wishing me an awesome weekend. Dave Lynch pointing out how big those paws are, those cougar paws. They certainly are. Well, Aaron's in a in a marvelous spot. I really gotta have to zoom in and reach with the lens here. Oop, I kind of moved her penguin. Not penguin, flamingo. I gotta get my animal kingdom straight here, pretty Aaron. But look at that. I always love it when the phone kind of strains to zoom in on one of the cats. Erin has uh, a handful of trees in her habitat, and she's got herself a good shade spot under one of those trees. And it also looks like a good kind of strategic lookout, too. She can look over at the boys. I think she can see through over into Daisy's habitat, which is fun for her, too. So good to see that uh, Miss Cheetah Erin is doing well, too. Obviously, um, you know, uh, either which way we would, you know, uh, you know, accept things, but it's certainly nice to, you know, kind of mentioning Fargo or seeing Aaron here. We're talking about the four new cats from the Michigan case and just seeing how well they're coming along and kind of coming into their own here at the Wildcat Sanctuary is, uh, is really something special. So I'm glad that we're all kind of getting these. Uh, little moments of joy and, and just reminders of uh, how fortunate we are to be here.